So, good afternoon, everyone. I am excited to present this topic. So, we'll talk about uh, cloud side pass traversal and uh, how to use it to <coughs> exploit CSRF. First, uh, my name is Maxence Schmidt. I'm working as a senior uh, application security engineer at Biontech. So, we are pen test, booting, testing all kind of app and mostly with a white box uh, approach. So, you can find me on the different social media, so don't hesitate to, to reach out. So first, before diving uh, into client-side pass traversal, uh, let's review what is the current situation about cross-site request forgery. So I took the definition from OWASP, so of course. So the goal of the CSRF is to trick a victim into performing uh, unwanted actions on a web application where this uh, victim is authenticated. And this uh, attack uh, specifically target uh, state-changing action on the, on the server. So in our session today, uh, we'll deep dive uh, first into CSRF and what are the current mitigation, and then we'll move uh, with uh, other uh, things. Very, very simple example about CSRF. Uh, a victim is logged in uh, in an application, a vulnerable, a vulnerable one. An attacker shares a malicious link with the victim. The victim opens the link and... Uh, the MySub web page send a form to the targeted web app, and uh, the cookie are sent with these uh, forms, and it is performing a state changing action uh, within the victim session. So most of the time, an attacker will craft such a form, so very simple one, so this one would just like, send a form request uh, to the vinable.com uh, website with a parameter and email, like, so he's trying to take over the email of the victim. So this is like basics from CSR things. So, there are some protection, of course, that are existing to protect against this. So, the most common uh, is uh, anti-CSF tokens. So, there is this uh, implementation is existing, but there can be some flaws here inside. So, sometimes it's not properly, properly checked by the, by the web application. Sometimes tokens are predictable or brute forceable, and so it is useless. Sometimes the token got leaked and the attacker can use it. Sometimes there is bad, uh, bad configuration and the token is only used in cookie and therefore it is also useless because it will be sent with a request. Sometimes it's not even tied to user, uh, so it's also flow and an attacker can, uh, can reuse his own uh, token to perform the attack. So this is a basic security about it and there are also other mechanisms. So there is a course configuration that uh, will uh, restrict uh, cross-origin requests uh, across different websites. And uh, there is the same site cookies. So by default, as likes now on modern browsers. So this is to avoid sending cookies across different sites. So let's took uh, our previous example with the same site as likes uh, configured. Victim is logged in. The attacker shares the malicious links. Victim opens the link. The, the request is sent, but at this time, the cookie will not be sent. So no action will be performed, no state changing action will be performed uh, within the victim session. This is thanks to luck that this, uh, this is not exploitable. So we can say that defenders did the job, did their job. Now we will find like, good resources to protect against CSRF. We will find good CSRF token libraries. So all the issue I showed before uh, around all the implementation issue that are solved now in the most common libraries. Most of those libraries will be, will be usable with any framework, Django, Flask, or any other frameworks. And now, like I said, like modern browsers uh, are implementing secure default configuration. So starting from this, many people think that CSRF is dead. But the answer is no, of course, I will be not doing this talk. <laughs> but before going uh, into Further, we just focus first on what is a client-side pass traversal. So what does it mean? Like All of you, or most of you may know what is a pass traversal, which is the ability to do dot dot slash dot dot slash to go outside the intended directory. But most of the people, it's well known on the server side. Most of the people use it to read, uh, to read uh, an intended file, for example, a config file to get secrets, for example. So how does it apply into a uh, client-side context? Nowadays, uh, many applications delegate m the logic part into the front end. Now, many frameworks are existing, uh, RAG.js, Vue.js, Ember.js, Angular, whatever. But 
Now, many applications implement complex logic inside the, the front end. So let's, let's take an example. So we have a web page accepting a parameter, a query parameter. So let's say it's a React front end. We don't really care about the technology. And this, uh, this front end, we just make a, a post request to an API. As simple as that. You will read the, the query ID and uh, use it in the pass parameter in the other request. So what if we are able to do a pass traversal inside this, uh, this request value? It will be doing a request on the backend API, the pass will be normalized, and then we'll be able to call another endpoint. So we'll be able to reroute uh, a request, and uh, it can be used to perform uh, CSRF. So for the convenience, I, I will create CSPT to CSRF to compare it to normal CSRF. So this is how we can use a client side pass reversal to, to exploit CSRF. But before going further, we need to have more definition about and also to know what are the different restrictions uh, about CSPT to CSRF. So, uh, like I said, it's a reroute of a legit API request. So it means all the authentication token, CSRF token, the front end will add it because it is the goal of this front end is to send a legit request. But we are just like rerouting it. Uh, so when we talk about uh, CSPT, we can split it in two parts. First, the source. So it will be uh, the input values that will be used to trigger the CSPT, and also the things that will be the reachable uh, endpoints that can be used with this CSPT. So first, the source. So it will be really similar to XSS. It is a client-side vulnerability, so it can be like any data controlled by the user, so we we'll have like DOM uh, based on URL fragments, it can be reflected, it can be stored. Like any user input can lead to it. To it. it really depends on how the front end uh, will use it. Also, when we talk about source, it's also important to know uh, when this request, request will be triggered. For example, it can be triggered when the page is loaded, but it can also be triggered when the victim clicks on, clicks on a button. If we talk about the sync, so the other part, we are looking for the source value that should be reflected in the path in another request. For example, we have this ID, like I said before, we are able to inject something which is requested, uh, which make a request, a post request in another uh, backend. But you can also have some transformation. For example, you can find suffix, you can find anything. It can also be like different uh, HTTP method. Why not only get, it can be, well, why not only post, it can be put or patch or whatever. And it can also like, target uh, another uh, backend. Now, if you have one front end talking to different backend, you can have like a different sync. Something which is uh, important, so as an attacker, we are able to control the path, but we are not able to control the HTTP method. It is, we are just rewriting this request, so it is the method uh, chose by the front end. We are not able to control the host, and we are not able to control any other headers. Also, the body will not be controllable. So, it's quite hard restriction, but uh, we want to find some things, some impactful things that share the same restriction, actually. If we find uh, a thing that share the same host, same headers, and same body, we'll be able to perform CSRF to impactful uh, thing. And of course, uh, those restriction, uh, it's tied to the source, the, the extension request made by the front end can uh, have different uh, requirements. So how to find, uh, yep, how to find impactful things? So it can be by going through the API documentation. Okay, I want to have a thing which is a post request uh, that doesn't allow any uh, JSON body parameter or whatever. Source code review, if you have the source code, it's nice. It can be uh, using some grep rules or any uh, good SAS to find uh, things inside the target app. And also, uh, burp root uh, bomb the filter. So this feature has been released, uh, if I remember well, beginning of the year, which is really nice, now that, uh, that I have it. 
So for example, if you want to have to list out all the endpoints that are uh, linked to api.target.com, you can do it. It should be a post request. It should have a JSON parameter and uh, at least one parameter called organization ID. You can configure it, uh, have your proxy filter with all these requirements, and you will see what are the potential and the uh, sync. So talking about sync, uh, we can have like different impact. It can be data link uh, using Open Redirect, for example. And I will only focus today on the client side request uh, forgery. So uh, why? Because I, I found it uh, very interesting if we compare CSRF with CSPT to CSRF. Uh, so both of them, you can do like post CSRF. The first one you will send a form, it will be a post, and the other one it will depend uh, of the of the front end logic. Of course, like I said, uh, there are some restrictions with CSPT to CSRF. You will not be able to control the body. However, it will work uh, with any uh, anti-CSRF token because the front end will send all the needed token for you. It will also work with same site likes because also the same thing, front end will, uh, it's a legit request that, that we are rewriting. Fun fact also, uh, it's nice to have a new uh, impact, so you can like target, patch, put, delete, and also get CSRF. I will talk uh, more later about it. And also, uh, you can have one-click CSRF, so same thing, like uh, you can have an XSS into a web app, and can be triggered when you click on a button or on a link. Same thing with uh, CSPT to CSRF. And the latest one, uh, the impact really depends on the source, like I said, and on the things. You can find the CSPT to CSRF, but if there is no exploitable uh, sync, it will be useless. So now you have understood the title of the talk, normally. <laughs> So I will go through uh, some practi practical examples and uh, some real-world scenario. So first one, it will be a one-click uh, CSPT to CSRF in Rocket Chat. Second one will be uh, in Mattermost uh, CSPT to CSRF. We will, we will exploit uh, post sync, and the latest one we will uh, exploit uh, get sync. So Rocket Chat and Mattermost are a collaborative tools, so you can like. Uh, Messaging, you can call people, do uh, video conference, you can also do some project management, process automation, so it's, uh, those products are huge. So for the first one, uh, so it is, it is in French. If you go to the Rocket Chat uh, web admin page, we'll have uh, this page, which is actually uh, a page where you can install some uh, app directly from the URL. And if you look at the source code, uh, you will see that it is reading a query parameter called ID. It is concatenating this ID into uh, an endpoint address, and then you can use it, you will use it as a, a post request. So actually, if we look more at it, we can inject a payload inside this ID. If someone clicks on the install button, it will trigger a post request on the, on the Rocket Chat API. So, in order to understand uh, the severity of this uh, vulnerability, we need to understand the sync restriction. So the request that will be sent, it will be a post body. We will not have control over the body parameter, so it will be only the URL and the download only uh, parameters that are, that are sent by the front end. Uh, as another care, we are, we are able to control the, we are able to do pass traversal, so we are able to control pass parameter, but also to add uh, additional get parameters if needed. And uh, something important also, uh, the backend is lax on accepting, on accepting extra body parameter. What does it mean? It means like uh, it doesn't enforce uh, strict JSON object validation on backend. So it means like if we send uh, a JSON object with extra parameter, which is not intended in the backend, it will not comply. It will just accept it and process it. So based on this restriction, we found some target targetable things. So for example, we are able to archive and archive some uh, discussion. We are able to lock out some uh, device to enable the, 2FA, uh, the email with 2FA. And uh, so the POC will be like, the victim just need to open it, click on install, and the HTTP request will be sent. So if we look uh, at this burp screenshot, you can see that the referrer, so the request is coming uh, from this web page with the uh, payload inside the ID parameter. 
we can see that the sync is rich, uh, which is our uh, API v1 user logo to uh, other client. We can see that the request is a 200 OK, so it has worked. And we don't have control over body, like I said. We don't have control over uh, the other headers. But we can see that there is a XOT token, which is an authentication token for Rocket Chat. And we don't have control over the body, but uh, we say the backend is lax, so it's OK, it's still working. Talking about severity, so this uh, example requires a lot of user interaction. Like we need uh, the victim to open the web page, trust the user, click on install button, which is barely not acceptable. Like uh, it's like he will install a, an app, uh, untrusted app, so he will not do it mostly, but it's still, uh, still an issue. And the things that we saw, it just low impact things. We are not able to take over any account. We are not able to do something interesting. So we can consider it as, as a low severity. Let's look at uh, another example. So it, it's in, uh, in Mattermost. And if we look at the source code, we'll have this uh, one page that will, again, re uh, read this uh, telem run ID uh, parameter from the query. We we'll call uh, this method, so from a front-end developer, it's nice, okay, he got a method to make an API call, but what the developer may not know, it's like this ID is used in a post request and it is concatenated inside the, as a pass parameter. So same thing, we're able to control uh, the telemran ID param and then it is uh, used inside the post request. We can also uh, see that the body will be the the action parameter, telem action parameter. So here we have uh, CSPT to CSF with a post sync. So we can uh, try it uh, with this uh, post parameter. So let's try to do a demo live. <laughs> uh, here it is. I have it prepared here. So there is this telem run ID, I just like. Uh, Okay, I just did a CSPT injection. So let's look at the burp history. We can see that our payload has been injected here. So, okay, nothing happened so far. Let's, the second one would be just to show that the pass traverser is working. So let's just dot, dot, slash, dot, dot, slash, and whatever on point here. Okay, let's look at the burp one. Uh, we can see that we were able to pass traversal and to get access to, well, to the backend uh, API. And uh, on the latest one, we will try to call uh, a legit uh, API, API v4 uh, cache invalidated, which is an armless uh, endpoint. And if we look at uh, burp, we should be able to uh, saw it. Uh, it's just this one. So it works, actually. So this is what happened. We put this payload. We had this request at the end. Same thing, so we, are, we sent this request, the request was okay. We did not control any headers, body, or method, but all the cookies and everything is there, except for as a CSRF token also. So we are able to call any uh, API sync uh, on this uh, API. So we need to, okay, we have something working, same thing. We need to understand the severity. So we need to find other uh, endpoints that match the same restriction. So post, post endpoint, no mandatory parameters and uh, others than action. Same thing, we are able to pass any pass parameter, get parameters also, and same thing on Mattermost, the backend was lax. And this time we got more lucky. We got luckier because we found so many uh, uh, targetable things. So for example, we are able to promote a uh, guest as a user to demote it. We are able to assign a bot to, to an ID. So there is some admin and point like restart, like purge index indexes in elastic shirts and so on. But the most impact impactful one was uh, install from URL. So if you look at the documentation, so it is a post endpoint that accept uh, that accept a query parameter, which is plugin download URL. And uh, what it will do, it will just don't look at this URL, download the plugin, and install it for you. However, uh, this is not enabled by default on most instances. We will not have it uh, enabled on your uh, SAS instance, but it can be enabled uh, easily if you have a Docker one or anything. 
So, uh, same thing, let's look at the severity. The victim must visit, visit a link. Uh, we, there is no other interaction like clicking, clicking on a button like uh, we got for uh, Rocket Chat. And uh, we were about to reach multiple impactful uh, state changing things, and the worst case scenario is an, uh, is an RC. So we can consider this variety as a higher severity, so after we can talk medium or high, whatever, but it's still, it's still important. So the last example, it's uh, an exploitation with a get sync. So uh, yes, let's say a get sync. So normally, uh, nothing can happen because there is one golden rule. Do not make any state changing operation on the get, uh, get endpoint. And Mattermost was uh, following this rule. So at first we thought, OK, it's not exploitable. Let's go and continue our assessment. But after some time, we say, OK, maybe it's not directly exploitable, but maybe we can find a way to exploit it uh, using a second order directory. So what, what, do, what do I want to say with this? So let's take a simple uh, example. So we have the same web page reading an ID, passing it this time to a get sync, but this get, most of the time, if a front end do a get request, is to get back some JSON data. It will read this uh, JSON data and read this ID and uh, will make another post request. And uh, what if we are able to perform this uh, current side pass traversal? So this ID is vulnerable to it, we will reach another endpoint. And if we are able to control uh, the ID which is returned by uh, this request, the front end will follow it. So that was uh, our guess at that time. We, we say, OK, we have this first primitive, which is uh, get this PT to CSIF. The source of it will be uh, the user input, the user URL. And the sync will be a get request on the API. Then we have, this, we have this second primitive, which is a post-CSRF. The source is the ID, which is inside the JSON data. And uh, we may be able to target a sync, which is a post-request. So talking about Mattermost, uh, there is uh, one link. So if you use Mattermost, you know this link, which, because it's just like if you want to share a channel, so you belong to an to a team, uh, this team got multiple channels, and uh, you can share this channel. What the front end would do actually? It will read this uh, URL, retrieve channel, channel name details, check if the user is a member of, uh, of the channel, and if he, if he wrote to join, and try to add the user to the channel. So if we take a look at all the HTTP requests, not all, but I simplify it uh, for the presentation. But if we look at the different uh, HTTP requests which is sent uh, during this uh, process, so front end try to retrieve the channel details, it will uh, send a GET request. Channel details will be returned, so we have an ID, uh, we have a display of the channel name, we also uh, know if the channel is private or open. Then uh, the front end will process the JSON. Uh, it will try to see if the member is part of this channel. It will make another request to ask if it is part of it. If it is not a 200, it will try to add this user to the channel. And we'll do it by sending a post request with the ID from the JSON, actually. So we, we were able to find the get uh, source by injecting the pass parameter directly. So either from, uh, like when you chat to, with someone in some Metamost, uh, you can inject it like this. But if you come from another website, you need to double URL encode it. And if we look at uh, what will be sent in the backend, uh, we'll see that uh, there will be some pass normalization and we will reach our get sync. So let's go back, step by step. We have this get sync with a pass traversal. We are able to reach our get sync, so we can reach any uh, get um, get uh, endpoint on the on the Metamost API. So we tried it. We tried it with a non-existing endpoint, so just return a 4-4. That's not what we want actually. 
we want to have uh, a JSON, a JSON array with uh, the control of the ID. If we have it, we will be able, this ID will be used in the other request and we will be able to perform our post CSRF. So if we get back, so we got those two primitives, and we just need something that will link those two primitives. We need this uh, gadget. So we need a get thing that will return uh, those data. So same thing as usual, we try to find some uh, get things that match all these requirements. So get endpoint, no mandatory uh, body parameter, something that attacker got control over the pass and uh, it can pass additional get parameters. And the most important one, the attacker, the attacker must control the ID of the return JSON. So we try to play a little bit with the uh, ID. Uh, in Mattermost, for example, try to modify the user object to control the ID. However, in Mattermost, uh, those IDs are generated randomly and cannot be modified afterward. But we did find an interesting endpoint, which is this one. If we look at it, it's a, it's a get endpoint. It accepts only a pass parameter, and it's uh, just returning a file. Actually, in Mattermost, you have capabilities to uh, share attachment uh, when you talk to someone. So there is uh, some files endpoint where you can upload uh, files, and if you do so, you will have uh, a file ID, and you will be able to request uh, the file from uh, using this file ID. So let's put it uh, all together. So we have our injection. We try to reach our uh, file. The CSPT is working. We are about to reach our file. Our file is returned. We can put the period in our file, the post sync, and then all the requests will be made and we'll be able to perform another CSPT to CSRF with a post sync at the end. So we were able to send them together. So by uh, opening uh, an ID, so I have prepared it also. Here it is. Yep, yep. Uh, so we have, a, we have a channel, the attacker have upload a JSON file. So we can see we try to reach this endpoint, the same endpoint as before. And uh, there, here it is. And uh, here we have our uh, payload with a pass parameter injected. So we can see that there is dot dot slash, dot dot slash files and our file ID actually. And if the victims click on it, okay, nothing happened. But if you look at our burp, we can, we can see that this post request has been made as a victim uh, sessions. So at the end, we were able to, um, to chain everything together to be able to perform this request. And same thing, okay, we have a, a CSPT to CSF with the post thing, so what can we do? And actually, it is the same restriction as the previous CVE, so all the impactful things that were found are compatible with this one. So same impact. So we can uh, go uh, to RC if needed. The only uh, difference is that the, the attacker must uh, be allowed to upload the file. So it, it should at be uh, it should at least be a guest. And uh, but if he is a guest, he can uh, upload the file and share a link to the victim, and then uh, it will be exploitable. So we can write it as medium because like we need another step to to exploit it. So uh, I have presented three different exploitations for this vulnerability. So I would like also to thank the Matamos and Rocket Chat team for their collaboration and uh, to, uh, for the allowing me to, to disclose this uh, during this presentation. Uh, also, it's not the only finding uh, that we have. We finding very often now most of the applications are implementing like complex logic inside the front end. So it's something which is very common. And uh, we may think also that the, the gadget tricks that we use to, to, to have this JSON data is uh, kind of weird, but it's also very common. It's very common to have one application exposing many APIs, and one of these APIs will be like upload or download data. So, uh, so how we find it, actually? So of course, we have source code, but we also build a burp extension, actually. Uh, it will, uh, you can configure source and scope. 
you can configure what are the different uh, things you want to reach, and uh, you, can, you will be able to scan it. So how it will work, actually, it will be very, very simple. I can show, show it to you live. Uh, so you, I'm scanning everything. I want all the things which are supposed to put uh, up, sorry, get or whatever. I can scan. It will look actually for reflected values inside pass parameter. So it goes through your proxy story, look for each query parameter, and if this query value, value is reflected inside the past, it will, uh, it will be in this list. For example, there is our uh, rocket chat vulnerability, we can see it. So this uh, ID value has been reflected inside this pass. So it might not be uh, an exploitable CSPT to CSRF, but uh, yeah, it's nice. But at least it can be a good, uh, good lead if you want to, to look for it. Uh, yep, it went back here. So that's what I show actually. So he, you will have reflected values. You will see the source and the associated sync. We also have a way to remove all the false positive, and uh, we also implemented a passive uh, scanner vulnerability, which is just a token value. And if he, if the burp uh, find it inside the proxy, it will just raise the uh, raise an alert. So, for example, uh, where it is up here. If, uh, if, I, if I take this one, I copy the URL with the canary. If I go to my uh, Firefox one, paste it, if it's working, of course. No, misclick. Open it. <laughs> Did it break? Burp. I don't know, burp, <laughs> crash, anyway. So if you do so, you will find uh, the issue over here. So we'll be able to see, uh, we just have an alert saying, okay, you configure this token and we have seen it inside uh, this path. So sure there is a, a CSPT uh, which is possible. Yep. No way. Up, up. There's also a feature to uh, export all the sources, so you will have different sources on the left. You can export everything. It will just give you a list of URL with a token, and you just need to open everything in your browser. And you just wait for, for having this uh, passive scanner triggered, actually. That's how like, I, I used to, to do it. Like, I can open like other bird project, just run this tool, reopen all the URL, and uh, check if there is anything triggering. Uh, of course, uh, it's a burp extension, so there are some limitations. Uh, so there will be like no DOM of store source unless you use the token, of course. Sometimes the front end uh, implements uh, client side routing. For example, there is a root um, rag DOM router that you, can, uh, that you can navigate inside the application, but all these requests will not be sent to burp except the API request. So you will not be able to find it in burp. And uh, if you want to find something, you, you still need to properly crawl your, your application. And solution to that is to use a source code review or other good SAS uh, with appropriate rules, so same way. And yesterday we got a presentation about the client side CSRF, and uh, I didn't check this tool, but it, look, it looks good. And uh, also a little bit of a takeaway uh, for um, exploitation, so all of the common bypass that you know uh, with URL, like for CS SSRF or, uh, or pass, no pass normalization, everything can be used. So for example, question mark to add additional query parameter, add a fragment to remove extra query parameter. Uh, some backends are laxed. And um, also, you, sometimes backends are very lax and may accept body parameter as query parameter. In some language, you can do a uh, method override. For example, you can force in the URL uh, another HTTP method. And uh, of course, don't hesitate to URL encode or double URL encode your exploit if you want to use a, to exploit pass parameter. And uh, don't underestimate things that are other than post. We, we find some cool stuff. For example, we exploit a, 
a delete thing to remove a MFA configuration for a victim, for example. And as a, also a last takeaway, uh, this uh, using a, such a gadget like we used, it's very common. It was very common to find this uh, kind of exploit. For example, you have an attacker. He contacts the admin saying, okay, John no, he's on my team, he's leaving. So can you change uh, the team? Admin is very kind, he says yes. And he opens the link, so we can see there is a gadget to read another file. Same thing as before, the JSON is returned, but this time the ID uh, is not John ID, it's uh, admin ID, and the email, is, it is not John email, but it is an attacker email. But what's happened in the front end, sometimes the uh, admin will not see anything. We will not see, he will not see the ID, will not see the email, but he will see first name, last name, and the team. And we have seen that multiple times, if the admin submit it, it will just submit all the old JSON with a small modification. So if, he, if he's doing so in this example, he will modify his own account, and uh, an account will be, will be performed by modifying the email. So, uh, if we talk about remediation, uh, so there's stuff that we can do in the back end. For example, a stick JSON uh, schema and uh, input validation. So if you are, ex if you are expecting a certain uh, schema, for example, an ID, a first name, which is a string, and that's it, it should not accept any other parameter. And in the front end, uh, of course, uh, user input validation from past parameter anywhere. And uh, sanitize uh, user input, uh, which is used in the, as a pass parameter inside the current SDK. Because if you are a front-end developer, most of the time you will use an SDK which is uh, generated automatically by any open API generator. And uh, the developer will not know that uh, it is sending this ID uh, inside the pass parameter. So as a conclusion, so I can say that uh, thanks to CSPT, to CSF, CSF is still, still alive. Yesterday, with the presentation that we got, we saw many different ways to exploit CSF also. And what I wanted to, to share, it's, it would be great to spread the word because it's overlooked by many security researchers. So if you look at this kind of vulnerability, we'll find uh, very few reports. I, I have it uh, like four or five reports about it. Uh, and it is also unknown by most of the front-end developers, but it is very, very common. Like, when I saw an application with a front-end and back-end, it's uh, sure that we find something. And uh, I also wanted to do this talk because it's the first, it is the first time that we saw uh, we are able to use a get sync as a gadget to perform a CSRF at the end. Uh, also, so we will release uh, the CSPT burp extension along with the white paper talking about it, so we'll be able to find all this information uh, later on. So thank you a lot. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate. <laughs>